The Gospels, I told you before, used to be really confusing to me. I always wanted to understand them. When you learn right division, you learn the key to understanding the four Gospels. And then after you start going through them, you just, it just starts lightening up. <laughs> the, the light that, uh, that comes as you start studying this, as we learned last week, as we finished out chapter 4, the miracles and, and then, of course, the parables were about the gospel of the kingdom. But even the miracles that Jesus Christ does has a spiritual lesson behind them. Uh, the fact that he, uh, you know, calms the storm. Uh, Israel is going to go through a tribulation. And Jesus Christ is going to be able to calm the storm and, and bring the kingdom to the, to, uh, the world and uh, uh, to the earth. And, and so there, the, that, that picture there is to give assurance that he is in control, and, and that's, it ends by them wondering what manner of man is this. <laughs> well, he's not like any other man. That's, he's the, the God-man, Christ Jesus. Uh, when you come to chapter 5 now, we're going to look at actually three different incidences that's going to take place, uh, three miracles. Uh, most of the things we looked at in the chapters prior had five things going on, and it's interesting, the correlation, but instead of giving you the correlation between the three things at the beginning, I'm going to give them to you after we've studied them, and then you'll look back with a little bit more understanding and, and, uh, and just see how the Scripture just is miraculously put together and then preserved for us by God. But uh, the first is an is, uh, incident, it's called, uh, usually known as the maniac of uh, the Gadarenes, and uh, it's actually the first 20 verses where the Lord Jesus Christ casts out what is called a legion of angels out of a man. Now, we're going to look at it in different sections uh, because there's a lot of things to learn and to understand from it. But let's just, just get familiar with it by reading it. So uh, we're going to read the first 20 verses. Uh, Mark 5, 1 says, And they came near unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and and the chains had been broken asunder uh, by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit." And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, mu- uh, and he besought him much that he would not send them uh, away out of the country. Now there were there nigh unto the m- mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Uh, There were about 2,000 that were choked in the sea. And they that fed the the swine uh, fled and told told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what uh, was done, what that, see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and, so, and see him that was possessed with, with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they, and, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devils and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed, uh, prayed him that that he might be with him, howbeit Jesus suffered him not. But said unto him, go, to the, go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and, and had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So quite an incident takes place there. Uh, I put up the map because it's important to see they were over here in near Calpurnium there, they've crossed the Red Sea, but they didn't just cross it this way, they crossed it 
from almost the height to the, to the bottom. They came over to the, here's Gadara, so they came, he came over to the Gadarenes. So he's coming into that area. The last thing that you read is, is how that man, after he couldn't go back with the Lord, back up to Capernaum, that he had to stay in that country and tell people what the Lord did for him. He went through all Decapolis. This whole area here is called Decapolis. So he covered a region. He didn't just cover the city. He didn't just go back to his family and friends. This man became an evangelist <laughs> and, uh, and went and told those people those things. So the, the territory is important because, as you realize, the Lord ministered in Galilee. There is some stopping in Samaria, but Judea primarily. But now here you are on the, uh, what's that, <laughs> the eastern banks of the, of the Jordan River and the gospel being spread to the eastern part of that in the area of Decapolis. And also you might understand then what's taking place here. Uh, uh, a group of Jewish people, the Lord sent to the lo- not, not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So these are Jews that, that are being ministered to. But a group of Jews feeding swine, or at least a group of men paid by the Jews to feed the swine. And, uh, and, and you know, that's a peculiar thing there. But you begin to see the picture. The picture is that Jesus Christ uh, is actually cleansing the land of devils. Now, if you haven't learned this yet, if you haven't been with us in our Sunday school class, we, we were introduced to demon possession and casting out devils back in Mark chapter 1. The reason that's happening, you write down for yourself, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2, because it says there that the Messiah is going to rid the land of unclean spirits. Uh, there, is a, there is a battle for this land mass here, especially Jerusalem. And Satan is not just, uh, Satan is actively involved with, with a demon force in that area. And, uh, and the Lord is, is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He's going to establish his kingdom in, that, in this land, the capital being in Jerusalem. And as he comes preaching that gospel of the kingdom, he is cast, he's cleansing the land. He's casting out all the unclean spirits. So there's a concentration of demons there that, that the Lord is showing his power over them. And, 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 and so you, that's one of the pictures that you need to see. That's, that's why this is happening. The other thing that you need to see is that the Jews here are actually holding on to financial wealth. The riches of this world mean more to them than the gospel of the kingdom does. Uh, I mean, there's 2,000 swine. Now, you know, did you ever pass one of those trucks going down the street? You get behind them and you can't, you can't stand the smell because that, that truck is loaded with pigs. Anybody have any idea how many pigs on that truck? hundred maybe? I don't know. I don't know if they, yeah, they squeeze them in there. Those pigs don't get no room to move. But I can't, I can't imagine how much territory 2,000 pigs take up. But, but that's how many pigs are there. And, 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 you know, I always wondered about the Jews, but there's a separation when you read about, like, when, the, when they go into the city and tell them, and the people of the city come out, and it says, uh, verse 16, And they that saw it told them how, how it befell the man that was possessed with the devil, and also uh, concerning the swine. So there's this group of people who are different than the people of the city. The people of the city are like the financiers of this thing. And I, I, and I would imagine that these, Jew, these are not Jews that are feeding the swine because they're unclean. A Jew can't do anything, uh, can't touch a pig, got to stay away from a pig. But certainly if the Lord's ministry, and we know his ministry is to Israel, these people of the city, these are Jews making money raising swine to sell to Gentiles because Gentiles are unclean. And so you might as well make some money. If you can't do it yourself, you might as well make some money off it. And, uh, and so they got a quite an investment here. I don't even know how much it costs to feed 2,000 swine, but, <laughs> but uh, the, you got guys out there taking care of these swine, and uh, all of a sudden you, all your herd's gone. And uh, so then they asked the Lord to leave. But what you see in this picture is Jews who are hearing the gospel of the kingdom, have an opportunity to receive the gospel of the kingdom, but the riches, the cares of this world, and the riches of this world mean more to them than the gospel uh, of the gospel of the kingdom, more than Jesus Christ himself. Now, if that doesn't tell you what this is a picture of, then, then you're spiritually blind or just never been taught the, the, the uh, prophetic program. During the tribulation, people are going to have to make a decision to, concerning the gospel, the kingdom, and the riches of this world. And this is a picture of the Jews who are going to make a picture, or who are going to choose the devil over Jesus Christ during that tribulation. 
And, uh, and so there's, there's a warning just in picture form here uh, of a decision that has to be made. And, uh, and so you, that's the overall picture of it. Now, as we go through this, I'm always curious about things about demons, and it's not so much a, a study of demons that I want to do. Uh, we're actually going to talk about some things, how the Satan is active today in our question and answer session on Wednesday, if you'd like to come. But, uh, but here, I almost hesitate to say this. I actually labeled it Lessons from Demons, because I want to show you some things that, that we can learn from the demons and I say I hesitate because remember the Lord, when every time the demons would say, uh, acknowledge Jesus Christ, he would tell them to shut their mouth because they, they don't glorify him. They can't speak for him. So I don't want to say, let's study and learn from demons. <laughs> was, but, but the demons know some things that men of this world don't know, that men of that land didn't know. And I want you to see those things. So as you look at that, in the first five verses, let's look at those again. It says, And they came near unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Now you're familiar with that, where that's at. And when they were come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him. Uh, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. Fetters are like ankle, you know, they, they bind him hands and foot. And, uh, and the chains, he breaks the chains asunder and uh, plucks them asunder by him. And the fetters are broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. This guy's wild. Uh, living in the tombs, uh, verse 5, and always night and day, Jewish reckoning of time. Be good for you to know for the next study, next hour, that they reckon time starting with night. Night and day makes 24-hour period for them. Always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, and he saw Jesus afar off and ran and worshipped him. Well, the first thing I want you to notice is when I read that, I'm thinking, if, if we're talking about over in this land, this is the first time the Lord went over there. How this crazy man in the mountain know who Jesus Christ was? Well, when you read it, he doesn't know who Jesus Christ was. The man doesn't. When, when the man goes and worships him and... and, it, and uh, and it says in verse 7, And cried with a loud voice, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou Jesus, Son of the Most High? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And then when the Lord asked, it says, For the man had an unclean spirit. The Lord says, What's your name? It's Legion. These are demons that are coming before the Lord Jesus Christ and bow down before him, bowing before him. And the man not necessarily doesn't know who Jesus Christ is. Those demons filling that man knows exactly who Jesus Christ is. And, uh, and, and so there's, you know, they're working in that man. But so, so when you look at that, you realize the man comes and falls, but all the conversation that takes place is between the demons and the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so they, they know who he is. They, they you know, they, they know him from creation and uh, from the time that they were created. Uh, but, but also um, when it talks about these chains and fetters, one of the things, uh, just one of the speculations that I think about, uh, I've thought about demon possession through the years often because you just, there's things that you don't, don't know how to explain. And one of the things that, uh, whether it exists today, that's something we have to actually kind of get settled before we go any further. But, but sometimes you wonder about the things with people with mental illness. And not, I don't know that every mental illness could be, say, demon possession. But, you know, when a psychiatrist de deals with them, they always deal with them with a chemical imbalance. And I got thinking one time, certainly the chemistry of the body changes when a demon possesses it. I mean, a man can take chains. What would happen if you tried to break chains asunder? Wouldn't it rip right through your skin and break your bones? Wouldn't chains be stronger than your bones? But there's some kind of a, a physical manifestation that changes in a person. You know, they, they tell us, you know, like a woman who sees their baby, you know, almost get run over by a car, that a woman has the strength to lift a car up. That's supernatural. And, and we say that's adrenaline working in them, that there is a, there's a chemical that, that causes them to be able to do such a thing. 
And uh, if all that is true, then, then certainly demon possession does something chemistry to the body. And maybe sedating that chemist, you know, that chemical has, if that's demon possession. But anyhow, uh, when you see him busting the chains and the fetters and, and no man being able to tame him, th- this guy is a wild man, the maniac of, of the gatherings. And, uh, and, and yet when the demons see the Lord Jesus Christ, they come and they fall down and worship him. Uh, look, look at verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? Uh, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now they're begging, don't torment me. And he said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Um, we'll, we'll get to that part. But the idea here is they're, they're, these demons come running. They bow down. They're afraid of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look over at verse 17. The men of that land, they look, we've read verse 16 a couple times. They hear what just took place. And they turn to Jesus in verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of the coast. Jesus, why don't you just get back in that ship and go back where you came from? They don't have fear, do they? You know what it says in James? If you're not familiar with this verse, those who are probably don't need to turn there. James chapter 2. And again, James is written as a tribulation epistle warning these people that there are some things they're going to have to endure a trial of faith and so forth, but in, in warning them, that he, James is saying it, during that tribulation, it's not enough just to believe. That you have to have a works too. And that is, you, you're going to have to overcome the mark of the beast. So yeah. it's really different than the age of grace. That's why James and, and, and uh, Romans are so different in, in what they say. But verse, James chapter 2, verse 19 says, Thou believest there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. That's exactly... These these devils that are falling at the feet of Jesus Christ and worshiping him, they said to him, uh, uh, they cried with a loud voice, I'm back in Mark 5, 7, What have I to do with thee, thou Jesus, Son of the Most High God? They understood that Jesus Christ is the human manifestation, the Son of God. He's not an angel. He's not Michael the archangel. He's not one of them. (laughs) That they understand Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. He's God that has materialized and and taken on a bodily form. He is the Son of the Most High God. The Most High God is a reference to the one who controls heaven and earth, the possessor of heaven and earth. These angels know who the top man is. They're bowing and worshiping Jesus Christ because he is deity. And they recognize that deity. And and they fall before him and they are in fear of him where the very men of that land, they could learn a lesson from the demons, couldn't they? They don't fear the right way. They feared about their loss of money. They didn't fear who Jesus... It it says they were afraid, but, but their fear is not respectful fear, not reverence fear, not worship fear. They just wanted this man out of their area so they can continue on life as they know it and, have, uh, and, and as they believe it to be. And, and so they ask him to leave that land. But the devils believe and, and they also tremble. So they, the devils know who the, they know the deity of Jesus Christ. They also know when it says in verse uh, 5, they cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? You know what those demons know? They have nothing to do with Jesus. They've been, they are spiritually separated from God and Jesus Christ is preaching the gospel of the kingdom and they know they have no place in the kingdom of, of God and of Christ. When they say, what have I to do with thee? They know they have no part with him in that kingdom. So, so they know where they stand <laughs> and they also know they're going to be judged. He goes on to say, uh, Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now, what they're afraid of is is this 
of being judged. They, they, they know that there's going to be a torment that's coming to them. And verse 8 says, For he said, uh, he said unto them, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Well, if they're going to come out, see, see how verse 8 says for? The re- he actually said verses 8 and 9 before they said verse 7. And the reason they said verse 7, uh, the reason they're saying verse 8 is he's been, they've been told to come out, and if they come out, where are they going to go? And they're afraid that their torment is going to begin. And so they're begging not to be tormented. They know, they know Jesus Christ is deity. They know they have no place in his kingdom. They know their destiny is torment. They're going to be judged by Jesus Christ. And that torment is going to be in, in a place called hell. Hold your place here. Come to Mark. No, no, come to Luke <laughs> chapter 8. Now you have the same thing here, but in Luke 8, it says something in each one. 8, 8 verse 28, um, and when Jesus saw, uh, and when he saw Jesus, he cried out with a loud, uh, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and, uh, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. Now drop down to verse 31. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Now, what's the deep? See, they're afraid of being judged right there on the spot and tormented by Jesus Christ. If I come out of this man, don't torment us. Don't, don't, don't cast us into the deep. That's the same word that every time you read it, that word in the, in the book of Revelation, it's called the bottomless pit. And they understand that the bottomless pit, there's a place in hell. It's actually called Tartarus. I'll show you. Well, come over. I'll well, look at it. Uh, come over to uh, um, Second Peter. We're not going to look at the bottomless pit in the book of Revelation. It's, every time it's mentioned, it's that deep. But come over to Second Peter chapter 2. The Greek word here for hell is a word Tartarus. And what it means is the deepest hell. That's why it's called the bottomless pit in the book of Revelation. And it's a special place where where angels are going to be judged. You know, God talks about his fury against Israel back in Deuteronomy 32 for bowing down to idols. And it says, he said in his anger, I'll cast you to the lowest hell. So hell has degrees and there's a lower part of hell that's called the deep. That's called the pit. And, and, And Peter... Look at this. Second Peter chapter 2. Is that where I told you to go? Uh, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned. And by the way, that's a reference to what happened in the days of Noah. There was, there was a judgment that took place not just on human beings, but angelic beings. Uh, keep that in mind, by the way. It says, but cast them down to hell. Now, that, that's not the normal Gehenna, Lake of Fire. That's, that's that Tartarus. That's that deep. That's that pit. Uh, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. You know, you need to write it down. We don't have time to go there. Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. The same story. You, the, another piece of information is added. You know what those angels said to the Lord? How, have you come to torment us before our time? These demons know the deity of Christ. They know they have no part in the kingdom. They know that he's going to be their judge. They know they're going to be cast down into the pit. And they know that it's not time for that to happen yet. There are already some angels down in that pit. And that's why they're afraid of going there and joining them. Look over in the book of Jude. Just a couple more pages just before Revelation. It says in in Jude... Verse 6, there's only one chapter. It says, And the angels that kept not their first estate. Angels belong in heaven. That's where their territory is. That's their estate. But some angels had left there, but left their own habitation. The Bible calls them angels of heaven. But in the days of, of Noah, they came down to earth and, and took on women and, and started producing a new kind of species of people on the, on the earth. It says, but anyhow, God stopped that from happening. The angels which kept not their first estate, but, but left their own habitation, 
He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So God actually intervened in the earth, took some of those rebellious angels that thought they could do anything they want. See, there's an angelic police force. When you talk about principalities and powers and mights and the hosts of heaven, there's an angelic police and angelic armies. Those angels that were more rebellious than the other angels, God actually took them, put them in ahead of time, put them down into that pit, and they're reserved there for judgment. See, don't forget, people who go to hell are just in hell until the great white throne judgment. Then they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire forever. These angels are going to be, they're in hell now, they're in that pit, they're chained in there. By the way, when they're chained, notice what that says, everlasting chain, chains under darkness. What did that man keep breaking when people tried to, man can't make any chains that stop these demons, can he? But they, these demons know that Jesus Christ got some chains reserved from them that are everlasting chains that they're going to be in this pit and wait for a judgment where there's going to be an eternal wrath after that. Now that was the bell, but think about this. We learned all those things. These demons know these things for a fact. And it just makes me sick to hear grace believers who are turning and deciding they don't believe in hell. The devils do. <laughs> But, but, but the idea is, is this. The devils know all these details about the judgment that's coming, who Jesus Christ is, what's going to take place. But there are men in that land, there are men in our land today that don't believe in the deity of Christ, their lost condition, that, they, that he is going to be their judge, that they're, going to, they're not going to escape hell, and that that great day of judgment is coming. But it, just because they don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not true. And it's amazing. These dev- no wonder the devils believe and tremble. Man ought to follow suit, but man has an opportunity to be saved. For Israel, the gospel of the kingdom. For us, it's the gospel of the grace of God. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the class today, and I, I pray it would scare us to realize the reality of beings that are certainly more powerful than us and uh, have more knowledge of 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 spiritual things, of the reality of, of your eternal heavens. Now, we're so familiar with the earth, but they're familiar with both. And, uh, and Father, we can learn a lesson from these things to study our Bible and open up our spiritual eyes and realize how important it is for man to fear you and then to realize that you loved us and provided a salvation for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So thank you for your gift of eternal life and thank you for allowing us to come together in fellowship one with another to learn about you and about your eternal purpose and uh, to be a, a comfort and a strength one to another. And we pray that our fellowship time at Donut Sunday here will, will be just that. So in Christ's name we pray. Amen.